Hello everyone and welcome back to the Sagrada Gaming channel. I'm your host, Original Bon Jovi. This is week two of our history series in which we share with you guys the story of how Sagrada came to be where and what it is today. If this is your first time watching, I suggest you go back and start with the previous episode, because if you don't, this one won't make a whole lot of sense. As we saw last week, our organization began on Star Wars Republic Commando in July 2010, but it did not stay there. In this video, we'll talk about why we ended up on Star Wars The Old Republic and what that meant for the team. The Old Republic is, for all intents and purposes, World of Warcraft wrapped in Star Wars. When the MMORPG came out in 2011, it was actually the most expensive video game ever produced, and considering the fact that it took more than four years to make, that should come as no surprise. Chronologically, the events of the game take place 300 years after Knights of the Old Republic, and more than 3,500 years before the Star Wars movies that we all know and love. After a tense period of peace, the Galactic Republic is once again at war with the Sith Empire. Eventually, they set aside their differences to defeat shared threats. You have the choice to play as a Jedi or Sith, Smuggler or Bounty Hunter, Republic or Imperial Soldier. Again, these classes correspond closely to those in World of Warcraft. The game is absolutely massive and has more content than I could ever finish in my lifetime. For the PvE-minded, there are dungeons and raids, as well as story missions, and for PvP, there's basically war zones, ranked war zones, and arenas. Because MMOs are just very different from FPS games, I don't really want to get into the details. But if you'd like to learn more, most of the game is free to play, assuming you have about 50 gigabytes to spare on your PC. As we approached the end of 2012, activity on Republic Commando seriously began to dwindle. The comp players still did their private matches, but the pubs were pretty dead, and because the player base was nearly exhausted, the clans that funded most of the servers for many years, like Red Cell, Team Extreme, and Mercenaries of the Republic, they finally just cut them off. It would be a few more years until online multiplayer was discontinued entirely, and seeing how things were going, I wanted to pull Ark off the game and move somewhere else, but it wasn't exactly clear where we should go. Being a Star Wars based organization, it made sense to keep within that franchise rather than trying to go off and do something else, so that's what we did. I bought a new PC and we moved to Prophecy of the Five, which was the most heavily populated PvP server on Star Wars The Old Republic. Some of our guys like Lightning, Centrio, and Mark made the switch with me. Two Dark Sith members, Kelvin and Zexus, joined us as well. In the spring we provoked many open world PvP events. Basically, we'd get a massive group of high level people together on contested planets and we'd camp out at the Imperial spawns, killing enemy players as they appeared, which prevented them from completing missions. Pretty soon, they'd report back to the HQ about our attack, then high level Imperials would come to their rescue. There would always be a big showdown at that point. Even though we're now a Call of Duty content organization, our most popular video is still the open world PvP battle on Tatooine, at 7400 views. It's from the perspective of Vordzoki, one of the managers at that time, but I'm floating around the battle as well. I always found it strange that such a random video did so good. Quite honestly, the gameplay isn't even interesting. It's just 30 minutes of healing. Probably our biggest achievement on SWTOR was our participation in Galactic Domination. Unlike our random skirmishes with enemies, like in that Tatooine battle, Galactic Domination was a very well-organized event between factions set up by Silas, who owned the largest Imperial guild on our server called I Am Legend. The whole idea was to encourage people to get involved with open-world PvP, but at a much bigger scale than we had ever done before. There would be battles for control of entire planets happening simultaneously across the server. At the end, whoever occupied the most planets for the longest period of time would win. Our co-leader Zalik and many of our members worked with Pax Republica and other big guilds to keep the fight going on the Republic's side. Unfortunately, the Imperials outnumbered us and we did end up losing overall. However, it was a good time while it lasted. In October 2013, I finally decided that we should change the organization's name. After being advanced recon commandos, for the most part since July 24th, 2010, the team became known as Clan Scarata. Obviously, that's not exactly Scarata Gaming yet but closer than ARC for sure. This is one of the most common questions I get. What does Scrata mean, and why did we choose it? If I had to do the whole thing over again, I would probably come up with something different. It made sense at the time. The Republic Commando novels, which explore the backstory of the game, focus on a Mandalorian clan called Scrata, 
Since we were still a Star Wars org, picking a Star Wars name was ideal, and Clan Scrata was a perfect homage to the game we began on. It also made for a much cleaner tag in game than Advanced Recon Commandos. 2014 is a year that I remember almost nothing about, and going back into our old forums, I really didn't see much. The server we were based on began to slowly die off, and with it our presence as a guild. Just a few of us kept playing regularly. For the most part, we did PvE rather than PvP. I even started leading raids here and there to kill the time, which was interesting to say the least. The only thing that prevented the whole organization from crashing and burning for good was DICE's surprise reveal at E3. The Star Wars Battlefront series was being rebooted for release in 2015, and the hope for that game was all we needed. As we'll discuss next time, it didn't go according to plan, but that was for the best. Before I call it quits, I think I'm going to give a little shout out to our SWTOR grind squad. Lightning, Mark, Meowen, Dan Nobi, Tricky, Siobhan, Blaybitty, Vortsoki, and Honeybooz. Dozens of other people went through our ranks during that time, but they were by far the most active ones. If you're still listening to this, be sure to let me know in the comments, because I'd love to know how many people made it this far. Also, don't forget to like and sub. Until next time, I'm Original Bon Jovi. Peace.